Hey guys, Ollie here from the Roland Academy in the UK and here are five tips to help you work with vectors in Illustrator. Tip one, explaining the format. The primary difference between bitmap and vector formats is that one uses pixels to create the image that you see, whereas the other uses shapes which are created from nodes and are connected with lines. This image on the left here is a bitmap image and as I zoom in you can see that this starts to break up. Dependent on the number of pixels that you have in your original artwork, that affects the scalability of that particular piece. So if there's lots of pixels captured, you can make it much larger. However, if not, you start to get degradation quite early on. With the vector format, the benefit is that it's made from shapes. So as I start to zoom in here on this vector drawing, it doesn't break up, meaning that it's scalable also. The other thing just to show you quickly is that Illustrator has a wireframe mode, which is accessed using the shortcut Control Y. If I flip into this here, you can see on the left hand side, we have our bitmap image, which is one solid image and is therefore represented by a rectangle. Whereas the tiger that you saw on the right is actually made from a combination of shapes. And you can see how these would look here. The benefit to working with these shapes is that you can create cut lines from any of these. Tip two, Illustrator's vectorization tools. To transform our image from a bitmap, to a vector, we use a function called image trace within Illustrator. There are lots of tutorials online, but just briefly, if I click on my tiger here, up at the top, we have an image trace dropdown, and there are a number of built-in presets. These are really a great place to get started, and it's well worth playing with a few of these when you're trying to vectorize an object. If you want to take it a little bit further and you want to refine the vectorization, then a great way to do that is to go to window, and drop down to image trace in here and open up this image trace menu. In here, we have the same presets available as a starting point up at the top here. But what we also have are some advanced controls down at the bottom. This gives us a little bit more control over the vectorization process. Tip three, breaking down vectorized objects. One of the challenges when working with freshly vectorized images is that they're often all grouped together, meaning it's difficult to select the component parts. There's usually a couple of things that you can do that will help separate these elements down. So at the moment, everything's selected and you can tell that by the red line that runs around the outside. If I right click and click ungroup, that starts to give us some flexibility, but this line here that I want around the outside isn't selectable on its own. The next step that I would take is to right click and click release compound path. I'm also just going to delete this white banding box that we've got around the outside. Now what it means is I can just select this line that I'm after. What I'm going to do from here is hit control C to copy it. Then I'm going to click onto my freshly created cut lines layer, I'm just going to turn off the print layer and hit control F, which will paste it in place. Now we have our outline shape. What we can do is remove the fill or swap these two over to remove the fill and then click on our stroke in here and we'll just make that one the cut contour. I'll also make that 0.25 in weight. And now we've got a cut line that sits right on the edge of our design. Tip four, using the offset path function to create bleed. A cut line should ideally sit inside your design rather than right on its edge, as you can see here. In order to do that in Illustrator, there's two ways to use an offset path function. I'm just going to hide my print layer here on the right and then show you the first way to use the offset path function. So with our line selected, we can use object path offset path. And in here we can select a value because my document set up in pixels. That's the value that's shown. If you use another, that will be shown in there. You can either use plus values or minus values. I'm going to just use minus 10 pixels just so you can see the effect here. And we've got a few choices in terms of how we want the joins to appear. So we have options like round and bevel, which will help smooth off some of your cut lines. So for the right application, that can be handy. In here, we've also got our preview ticked so we can see the line as we're creating it. Once I click OK here, it creates two separate lines as opposed to the other option, which is just an effect. So if I delete this inner line here, I'm going to go in and go via effect and I'm going to drop down to path and then offset path. In here, if I type in the same parameters, so minus 10 pixels and use all of the same settings in here, what happens is when I shift over to control Y, the original line stays in its same place. However, it's imposed 10 
pixels inwards instead. This is a great option when you're just looking to quickly and easily use this function and have no need to actually move the line inwards. Now when I bring my artwork back in, we can see that our cut line's been moved in. Albeit too much for this particular design, but that's just to show you the process. Tip five, using the simplify function to remove excess nodes. When some shapes are traced, they produce a lot of nodes in order to create the lines that you see in front of you. When I hold down A here, you can see that we've got a lot of excess nodes in our cut line. And what this can lead to in some instances is kind of jagged cut lines. To simplify this down, there's a function in Illustrator. So firstly, I'm on the direct selection tool, which is A, and I'm just going to select all of my nodes in here. Then I'm going to go to Object, Path, and simplify. Now in here it shows that at the moment there's 23 points. We can either increase that back to, back to how it was or we can start to reduce those down. At a certain point it starts to mess with the shape so just keep that in mind. You can see here that we've lost a little bit of the original in some of the shape up here. But if we move along a little bit we can actually reduce the number of nodes down quite effectively and therefore get a smoother cut. 